And all right, we move on. We march the outlook for this season, by the way. Again, I now have my first this year, but I got the Clippers next year. That type of thing. Nothing imminent. For you guys, you have the Warriors and then a top three protected Bobcats and Sixers first rounder. So we'll see what happens there. So it is the Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, Boris Diaw, Kevin Love, DeAndre Jordan, OJ Mayo and company draft. Serge Ibaka. In terms of the team. Terms of the team. I'm going to double check a few things about my roster really quickly. Got the same fucking coach who just refuses to leave. Taking up residency. I got a lot of younger dudes. Unfortunately. Who just aren't going to be able to play. At least not consistently. So at the very least for me. Let's put Matt Gordon with the Iowa Wolves. He's the only one I can drop. Honestly, pretty much going to run a seven-man bench again and just run my best players into the ground pretty much as far as they can carry me. And uh, we'll see how that works out for me. For you guys... In terms of super usable players, I mean, Jesus, you can run, you can run 12 in the regular season. Judd Burton's still your head coach, but yeah, you could run 12 to get these young guys some playing time. Obviously, you could up it a little bit more. But yeah, you run 12 and you're getting pretty much everyone playing time. Or you could put Ingles in the G League and run 11, obviously. And Ingles being your... uh Lowest rated dude. Makes sense to put him there. I don't know if you're able to put a second guy there. You are not. But that does make your uh, your bench situation pretty straightforward. Definitely some dudes that you guys need to look to add to your trade block, which is what we will do right now. Public enemy number one, Marcus Camby. Horford, Gortat, then you got Bosch. Obviously, Warwick needs to go. As we talked about last season, Gerald Wallace can go now to free up cap space. Have Engels as the secondary option. And then you could make a choice between one of these two point guards. It's great to have both of them on the team, but it is a little bit pricey. It is a little bit pricey. But yeah, Paxson's looking a little bit better than Raymond Felton at this point. But that's up to you guys. If you wanted to carry two good point guards, you could. Let me know. All right, Felton's being mentioned a lot. There you go. There you go. For myself, it's still going to be Abdur Rahim and Allen. Honestly, I can put Karan Butler there now. Honestly, Mac Gordon. And uh, P.J. Tucker, since they're never really going to make it. I need to see my team have a phenomenal year. Like I said, I, I got to pull the plug on this and uh, try something different. For you guys, Marcus Camby has already confirmed he'll be leaving. For me, Alan and Abdur Rahim are both in an interesting spot. Time for the Timberwolves to show up. Or it's time for the Timberwolves to get blown the hell up. And I immediately get a trade offer for Hal Geiger in a second for 28-year-old Ed Powell. Absolutely not. Let's see. Magic beat the Timberwolves. A rarity. Given last season. So it's not the point guard you wanted to trade. But Paxson for Milwaukee's first rounder. You get 28-year-old point guard Ed Powell to play alongside Raymond Felton. 
So that first round pick could be anything. It could even be Chuck Paxson. I mean, this dude's solid. 23 years old, 81 overall, B potential. The Bucks led by Devin Harris, Chris Kamen, Wang Shi Shi, Steven Jackson. You guys know the full outlook. It's uh it's an interesting one. The trade, yes or no. Their dude's contract, he has one more year at four point seven three million. This is an interesting one. I think Paxson could easily be a part of your core moving forward. But it looks like yes is going to win out on this. We'll see. Nose catching up a little bit. I personally wouldn't take this because you already have three other first round picks. But I would, I would keep Chuck, but that's just me. That's just me. It's not my team. I don't get to make that decision. You guys do. As the joint will take the box. It could take anything. It could even be a boat, he says. <laughs> oh, goodness. Two tickets to a shitty comedy club. Looking like yes is still going to win out here. Looking like it is. Chat's starting to get spicy with one another. As they do. Boat's getting a little bit closer. It's getting a little bit closer. Going down to the wire. Four vote difference. Chuck Paxson is being dealt to the Milwaukee Bucks for Ed Powell and a first round pick this year unprotected. Let's take a look at what the magic look like now after that. Powell will be the starting point guard. Raymond Felton is hurt as is Ursan Ilyasova. So that does not help. Felton out for another week or two. Okay, no major injuries there. I did want to take a look at where some of the big names went. Steve Nash went back to the Mavericks. Here, let's just uh let's just scroll all the way here to all players. So LeBron right now is the top player in the league, 97 rated. KG on the Suns. Derek, of course, still with the Clippers alongside Kobe. Tim Duncan in Boston, as we knew. Pierce is still there for the big three with the Clippers. Wade still in uh, Utah. Chauncey Billups with the Spurs. Mari still with the Warriors. Yeah, Steve Nash over to Dallas. Chris Paul in the Nuggets. Allen Iverson joins Chris Paul on the Denver Nuggets, which is pretty damn scary for me. Elton Brand. Wow, it's freaking Paul Iverson and Yao Ming in Denver. That's insanity. That is absolute insanity. Jermaine O'Neal went to the Lakers. Tony Parker will uh, play alongside Kevin Durant. Jason Terry to the Nets. We're wondering how the Warriors were looking. The answer's pretty good, at least in terms of roster. Where did... Shaq go. Baron Davis to Chicago. Andre Miller to the Hornets. Vince Carter on the Hornets now as well. Since you guys traded him, he's still having injury trouble. Shaq also went to the Hornets. So the Hornets. Miller, Carter, Shaq, Al Harrington. Not a bad little, uh, not a bad little corp. Yeah, still way too early in the season to kind of know where certain draft picks are going to stand. I'm going to say no to that for the moment. Not want to trade Mr. Livingston oh, until I know if I'm going to be you. bad or not. I'm going to guess it's it's Mello. Thank you for the follow.
Edgar Wells is 24, B+. Plus. Livingston, Gordon, but a 2010 first-rounder from the Suns. KG, Curry, Mobley, Thomas. Oh, that's a rough spot. It's a rough spot because I don't know what my roster looks like yet, so I have to decline it for the moment. I have to decline it for the moment. We have a winning record, so I feel like I made the right choice. Of course, as I say that, I start losing a lot. I just, uh, oof, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I'm definitely getting offers for certain high-end players, but I feel like if I'm going to move on from them, it has to be the nuke. And honestly, I have a decent record here. I got to run it back. I got to risk it. I got to risk it. We weren't able to bring in anybody too crazy. But we uh, we have to keep this team together and risk it. And I'm going to put some first round picks up on the board and hope that I get some help. I don't know what I have cap space wise, but I, I have to go for it this year. Pretty much the last year of uh, Sharif and Ray Allen together. We got to push. We got to push. We just beat the Clippers, too, with all their star power, which is nuts. Big old pause in the sim speed here. Heard what's going on. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Bouncing back after accidentally falling asleep yesterday. You guys got an offer for Jeff Green, which is not worth it immediately. Just no. That's a no. Honestly, really quickly, trading block, untouchables, Abdur Rahim, Allen, Livingston, Butler, Geiger, untouchable. We are almost to the deadline here, though. It's going to be a week or so. Lenny White. Ooh, only a C potential. Not worth it. Not worth it. I mean, green is, well, mm, 21 77. C, uh, C plus potential. But yeah, you get a C potential guy back in return and a first. That's not really worth it, especially since green's your only real uh, primary option in that position. Not worth it. What's well, going to happen? Deadline coming up. Am I going to get any help? The answer is no. So the Magic at 11 and 33, the Timberwolves at 30 and 15. Different ends of the spectrum here in terms of where we both stand. Ray Allen is currently hurt. That uh, that sucks. That sucks a lot. Can we do Camby this time? Nope. Camby's here for the rest of the year, buddy. Deal with it. You guys made that choice. Let's see what we got then. Let's see what we got. So in the East, the Magic. Currently dead last as the Knicks already have more wins, about twice as many wins as they did last year. Timberwolves currently leading their division in third place in the West. Sixth overall in the NBA, actually above the big three in the Clippers. You guys currently are the worst team in the NBA. By design. By design. You're getting a lot of younger players some playing time. It's just a shame that you had uh, no way to move Marcus Camby. That's the, that's the big shame there. To be honest, now that you know your shit, you might as well just up the, up the bench utilization to really just spread the wealth in terms of playing time and Try to make the team work. It actually makes Al Horford the primary center over Camby. So, uh, really quickly, 
go to future draft picks in a minute. Contract extensions, as you knew, Marcus Camby's gone at the end of the year. Abdur Rahim is willing to come back. Ray Allen's out for six to eight weeks. What is Abdur Rahim's contract right now? It's a team option. Cool, so I don't have to re-sign him right now then. I can just pick up his option next season. I can just pick up his option next season and keep him that way. So don't gotta worry about it. At least not yet. At least not yet. But to take a look. In the future draft picks for you guys, you now have the Warriors, the Bucks, Bobcats, and Sixers. So the Sixers are good, the Warriors are good. So those aren't going to be great. You got the Bobcats, who are a top 10 team right now as well, and the Bucks are 11th. So right now, it's not looking like you guys are going to have any lottery picks out of all those selections. And you're going to have given up the number one overall pick. So uh, you're going to be helping out. You're going to be helping out at least one team. We march on. We march on. But again, for you guys at this stage, it's about getting those young players some playing time. And you are accomplishing that goal. But yeah, that Marcus can be trade. Uh, in terms of trading big men, you guys traded Marcus Camby, you let Jermaine O'Neal go, like, rough times. Rough times. We'll stop simulating here. Uh, really quickly, let's go contract extensions. Yeah, Camby's going to be leaving. Ray Allen will be willing to come back, too. He's still got one more year, though. I don't feel the need to re-sign Ray Allen and Sharif Abdurrahim a full year out before their deals are up. I don't. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's overly necessary. T-Wolves right now, though, looking pretty good. I do have to check game plan and the amount of people that we're running. I think we can run 10. Drop that bench utilization down. Get those starters in there more, and we're looking a little bit okay. Not that I care about Jelani McCoy, but it is what it is. And again, for you guys, it's at this point literally just run 10 players. Gortat doesn't get to play much. But at least Ilya Silva gets to play. Finish up this season, then T-Wolves are going to be back in the playoffs after a disastrous miss for me last season. Like, absolutely disastrous. Way too good of a team to miss the playoffs. We're going to rectify that mistake this year. The question is, just what exactly will your draft pick situation be? Given that you didn't have your first pick. Final week of the season, maybe one more after this. Not the best run of form. LeBron James back-to-back -back league MVPs for the Toronto Raptors. Kevin Durant in Indiana wins Rookie of the Year for the Pacers. Sixth Man of the Year, Desmond Mason with the Sonics. Defending champions. Defensive Player of the Year, again, is LeBron James. Most improved, Kyle Lowry of the Charlotte Bobcats. All first team is Gilbert Arenas, Baron Davis, LeBron James, Kevin Garnett, and Dwight Howard. The all defensive team is Davis, Arenas, James, Garnett, and Howard. All rookie team, Durant, Robert Reed, Mike Conley, OJ Dantley, and Al Horford of the Orlando Magic. The second seeded Timberwolves taking on the San Antonio Spurs. But for you guys, Golden State made the playoffs. Philadelphia made the playoffs. Milwaukee made the playoffs. That's, uh, that's a rough scene. Those draft picks. 
aren't going to be too great for you. As the Sonics. The Canby deal was with the Sonics. Well, you guys managed to fuck both of us on that trade. Good job. Looks like they'll be adding Derek Rose. Holy shit. Who the hell are you guys projected to pick? Jimmy Gordon at 19. DJ Augustine at 22nd. Trevor Jameson at 28. And Nick Batum at 30. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Well, this is uh, certainly an interesting situation now, isn't it? Fucking Nick Batum. There you go, chat. There's your reward for trading that point guard. Nick Batum.